do is to give a gist of the questions that are commonly asked within 10 or 15 minutes and we won't be giving much explanations to the answers but just make you familiarize with the questions that are being commonly asked and this is common to all the entrance entrance tests as well as other examinations because from polymer similar kind of questions are asked for every single examination so without wasting much time let's begin so the first question today is dye n butyl phthalate is plasticizer thermoplastic thermosetting plastic and elastomer so in some of the previous videos i have given the uh, definition of all these things like what a plasticizer is a thermoplastic thermosetting plastic and elastomer so the answer is option a plasticizer so uh, phthalate uh, plasticizers are the most commonly used plasticizers in PVC. Uh, that is, we know, polyvinyl chloride. And uh, so in PVC polymer chains, they are attracted to one another and there is a very rigid structure. And these are the plasticizers used. And the very common one are dialkyl phthalates and chrysal phthalates. These are the commonly used plasticizers. Now, the second question is, uh, which of the following is a chain growth polymer? So the answer itself uh, is given here. It is polystyrene and uh, other chain growth polymers given uh, examples of other chain growth polymers are polyethylene, polystyrene, PVC and uh, uh, polymethyl, uh, uh, methyl methacrylate and uh, polyacrylonitrile. All these are examples of chain growth polymers. So I'll, I would suggest that uh, you, uh, I think you all know the meaning of the chain growth polymers and uh, different types of other polymers. If not, I'll do a video on the same in the coming days. Please comment below if you need a video on the theory part of this polymers. Then, which of the following is classified as a polyester? polymer so option b terylene is the answer here ba bakelite and uh, melamine these are poly uh, these are all uh, formaldehyde resins so uh, the, these are from bakelite and melamine are formed by the uh, reaction between formaldehyde and some other compound and that will result in uh, the formation of a formaldehyde resin whereas nylon 6 is a polyamide so the only option left is polyester and terylene is a polyester polymer so option B is the correct answer here. So this is, uh, so you should remember these are uh, Bakelite and melamine. These are uh, resins, resin and uh, this is polyamide. Okay, resin and this is polyamide. I'll write it as PA so you can remember it. Next question, CH3 trice SiCl is used during the polymerization of organosilicons because so the chain length of organosilicon polymers can be controlled by use by adding of this um, uh, CH3 trice SiCl. Once we are adding this, it can it does not uh, act as a catalyst or uh, doesn't block the terminal end or improve the quality. It is just to control the length of the organosilicon polymers which uh, during the polymerization so that uh, we, uh, we could get the desired product. Only for those we use this um, compound. Now the fifth question is which of the following is a biodegradable polymer? So the answer is option D. It is uh, polyglycolic polylactic acid and it is also known as dextron and uh, used as sutures during the uh, surgery. So polyglycolic polylactic acid is the uh, answer. So what is biodegradable polymer? So this polymer can be decomposed once we are giving, uh, discarding it into environment. This can be degrade, degraded or decomposed using uh, biological organisms. In such cases, uh, they are known as biodegradable polymer and it get decomposed very fastly. So dextron or polyglycolic polylactic acid is the answer and these are used as sutures during the surgeries now uh, question number six is the number number average molar mass and the weight average molar mass of a polymer is determined via respective method so here one thing that you have to remember is um, uh, i would go with the answer osmometry and light scattering so there is no doubt that osmometry gives the number average molar mass so the thing is sometimes viscosity measurements you viscosity measurements usually give something called volume average uh, molar mass so it is represented as mv uh, 
um, but this MV is very close to number average uh, molar mass. So in cases where you have options, um, we, where you do not have this light scattering option, instead you have only viscosity measurement along with uh, the ultra centrifugation of per, or permeation chromatography, you should go with viscosity measurements because MV is very close to MW or weight average molar mass. So uh, osmometry is uh, used for calculating the number average molar mass and also uh, light scattering is used for uh, the uh, finding the weight average molar mass. Also remember in case you do not have the option of light scattering you should go with viscosity measurement. So that's with question number six. Now question number seven. Dacron is a continuous filament yarn used in uh, curtains, dress fabrics, etc. So we need to find the uh, polymers. Uh, the polymer is Dacron and we need to find the monomers of Dacron. So the answer is option D, ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid. So Dacron is composed of these two monomers. Keep this one in mind. So also uh, Dacron is also known as terylene uh, because it is formed by terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. So it is also known as terylene. Uh, that's about Dacron. So you should remember that this also used in curtains, dress fabrics, etc. Now question number eight, this is a numerical. In polymers, the only numerical type of questions that come is to find the number average or weight average molecular mass of the polymer sample. So here we can see that uh, we have a sample polymer. It has 40 percentage molecule with one molar mass, 20 percentage with another and 40 percentage with uh, 10,000. So total it makes up of 100 percentage. So let's see, we'll consider that, uh, we'll consider the number of molecules 40, 20 and 40. So 40 molecules with molecular mass of 30,000, 20 with 20,000 and also another 40 with 10,000 molecular mass. So the formula will be, what we will do is we will calculate the individual number of molecules to the uh, molar mass of that particular and uh, that particular set of molecules. So here we have 40 percent of molecules with molecular mass of 30,000. So our uh, answer would be 40 into 30,000 plus Next, what we'll have, we have 20 percentage with 20,000 molecular mass. So 20, 000, uh, 20 into 20,000 and another 40 with 10,000 molecular mass. So we'll be having 40 into 10,000. And we'll be dividing this whole divided by the total number of molecules, which is 40 plus 20 plus 40, which is 100. And that will be giving us the answer 20,000. So option B is the correct answer. So what we have to do when you have different percentages of molecules available, you will be uh, multiplying the uh, given number of molecules to the corresponding molecular mass and whole divided by the total number of molecules. So uh, that would give you the uh, so, or another way to represent this is sigma m i, which is the molecular mass n i, which is the number of molecules divided by sigma ni, total number of molecules. So this will give you the answer. Then the next question will be uh, the question number nine. Let's go to question number nine. It is mark how equation gives the relationship between. So the answer is option C, intrinsic viscosity and molecular weight. This is the one that I have mentioned two questions back. That is sometimes we can use viscosity also to find the molecular weight. So the equation is actually this one. Um, um, eta is equal to k m raised to a or alpha. So eta is the intrinsic uh, intrinsic viscosity. So the relationship between intrinsic viscosity and molecular weight is given. So this m is usually represented as m v because since it is found by uh, viscosity. So viscosity average to molecular weight. Okay, sorry, I have said volume average in some some uh, in the first slide. Sorry, I'm I'm correcting the mistake. It is viscosity average molecular weight, and this MV is very close to MW. So that is the point you have to remember. M MV is very close to MW, and this is the order of MV, MW, and MN. So the weight average is greater than. Uh, viscosity average which is greater than number average molecular mass. Next question. So I hope uh, the mark Hoving equation is clear to you. It gives the relationship between intrinsic viscosity and molecular weight and this is the equation and uh, this is the relationship between the three types of average mol mol molar mass of um, polymers. Now question number 10. 
in a polymer substituent uh, in a polymer substituents are located on the same side of the macromolecular backbone and such a polymer is called these are all very very direct questions you have to just these were previously asked in gate and other examination that's why we have taken these questions so the answer is isotactic so isotactic polymers are the type of polymers in which the polymer substituents are located on the same side of the macromolecular backbone so there will be a macromolecular backbone and the uh, and the arrangement of the polymer substituents will be on the same side as this backbone is so that is isotactic next which among the following is a branch chain polymer so we know bakelite is not a branch chain it is a cross link polymer then these two we know these are all straight chain polymers so the uh, branch chain polymer is option c ldp okay very very easy question so uh, and you also know the relation between ldp and hdp so ldp is the branch chain polymer out of pvc bakelite ldp and hdp bakelite is a cross link polymer and the other two are straight chain polymers now question 12 Uh, polymer used in orthopedic devices and in controlled release of drugs is so we have so many options M many of you might be might not be familiar with all of this but you have to remember the polymer is phbv or poly 3 hydroxy butyrate co 3 hydroxy valerate this is commonly known as phbv and um, th this is used in uh, packaging and orthopedic devices also uh, in a controlled release in co also used for controlled release of drugs and this is uh, a biodegradable polymer which is um, uh, which undergoes degradation using bacteria in the environment so this is a biodegradable po polymer and used in orthopedic devices and you also uh, you should also try to memorize the full name of this like poly 3 hydroxy butyrate co 3 hydroxy valerate p h b b Ho hope it is clear to you now let's go with the next go to the next question which of the following statements is not true about low density polyethylene so polyethylene is definitely very tough but uh, it is not hard and it is a poor conductor of density and highly branched structure so the answer is option b it is not hard here the question is which is not true not the one which is true so tough always read the question carefully it is tough it is a poor conductor of density and it is high, high, uh, highly branched structure but it is not hard instead it is very flexible polyethylene uh, polyethylene is uh, polyethylene is a very flexible kind of polymer that to low density ldp is the one that we are asked, asking here now next question dienyl is made from a copolymer of acrylonitrile and vinyl chloride and it is used to manufacture what so this is very important because uh, uh, it is used for making hair wigs many of us do not know what the hair wigs are com composed of so this is actually a polymer and that polymer is made from acrylonitrile and vinyl chloride and it is known as dienyl so this is used to make hair wigs dienyl is the poly polymer of acrylonitrile and vinyl chloride and therefore um, it and also it is used for hair wigs now the 15th question the linear product of phenol formaldehyde po polymerization used in paints so here the usage is very important here there are many phenol formaldehyde resins so the answer here is novolac you will be confused between a and b bakelite is also a phenol formaldehyde resin and it is also a cross link polymer but it is not used in paint the one that is used in paints is novolac that is the one that we have to memorize uh, every time we see the question we should be very careful uh, regarding what usage of the polymer is given in the question here it is asked specifically asked as the one used in paint so our answer should be novolac next question monomers of glyptal are so the, uh, there are so many questions uh, so many options here the answer is option c ethylene glycol and phthalic acid it's not terephthalic acid it is uh, uh, phthalic acid and what you have to uh, do is when you are going through these questions please whenever you come across the name of some polymer and the monomers write it down because it can it can be a repeated question in the coming years also uh always write it down so that you do not have to read the whole chapter all over again you need to just look at the names and the points that you have written when you are covering the questions so the monomer of glyptal are ethylene glycol and phthalic acid the 17th question is 
in monodispersed natural polymers the value of polydispersity index is generally so as i said there are a few uh, number of questions that is numerically related or mathematically related in the case of polymers rest everything is either chemistry related or something to memorize uh, memorize so here the mono dispersed natural polymers the polydispersity index is one such thing and the uh, for mono dispersed natural polymers uh, the polydispersity index will be equal to 1 or it is unity you should remember this this is very important so the value is 1 now question 18 in the polymerization of polystyrene the common chain transfer agent it is also represented as cta sometimes so, so the common chain transfer agent in polystyrene is so it is carbon tetrachloride or carbon tetrabromide that is the c ccl4 cbr4 or we can generally represent it as cx4 so ccl4 or uh, C, cbr4 will be the answer so that will be the chain transfer agent in the polymerization of polystyrene next question the 19th question is uh, the correct order of the tensile strength of buna s polyethene and nylon zinc, nylon 6 is so the tensile strength we all know it is a uh, physical property and uh, this is uh, the order Nylon 6 is the one with the maximum tensile strength followed by polyethene and finally Buna S. So this order also you can write it down because it will be helpful for you uh, later on. So again, uh, the correct order of tensile strength is nylon 6 greater than polyethene greater than Buna S. Option A is the correct answer. Now the final question for the day is which of the following is a thermosetting plastic so we have four options here polyethylene polystyrene this is styrene sorry polystyrene uh, bakelite and peplon so the answer is option c bakelite as i said it is a form uh, cross linked polymer or the uh, and it is made up of phenol and formaldehyde it is a phenol formaldehyde resin and it is also known as a thermosetting plastic. And as I said, you can go to our previous videos to know what the different definitions are. What is thermoplastic, thermosetting plastic, elastomers, and plasticizers. I have done that video previously. So that's all. I hope you got the gist of the questions in this part. I'll do more of this kind of videos where we'll cover so many questions uh, within a short time so that you'll be familiar with the different types of questions asked in these areas i'll do similar things with polymer then biomolecules all these portion will be covering in this manner so that you don't have to spend much time reading the theory portion of this and in case you are not familiar with the part of polymers you can ask to me in the comment section below i'll be doing the video um, that's all uh, prepare well continue reading and do very well in any of the exams coming up thank you so much for watching have a good day